Hello everyone, my name is Cynthia Parker and I am your professor for this class, Geography 150, Map Interpretation and Analysis. Some of you may have had me in the previous semester. I also taught the class Geography 155 and Survey 155, uh, Introduction to Geographic Information Systems. This class is kind of a precursor to this class, or that class was a precursor to this class. And if you haven't taken 155, I highly recommend you take it when it's off for next semester, because we will get a lot more in depth with geospatial analysis in that class than we will in here. But this class, I think, is a lot of fun. Um, I don't think anyone really quite realizes how much geospatial technologies are used in our everyday lives, especially those of us who are constantly on our smartphones. <laughs> Um, and so much more beyond that, and how geosp geospatial technology runs the world, really. And I think it's important for all of us to at least try to understand it. There's a lot in there, but and so we will only scratch the surface with this class, but by going through this class, you're going to have a much better understanding of our world and certain technologies. <laughs> Uh, a little bit about me, I have been a teacher for a couple of years now. I mostly teach at uh, San Bernardino Valley College. I've only teach started teaching here at Santiago Canyon College as of this last spring. But I have worked with our the head of our department, Vanessa Engstrom, for a very long time. I was her teacher's assistant back in grad school. She used to teach at my other community college and she's the one who got me into uh, geography in the first place. So uh, I highly recommend reaching out to her or me or any of anyone else in our department if you have more questions about geography. Um, I got my master's degree and bachelor's degree from Cal State Fullerton. Uh, go Titans! <laughs> it's a very good school for geography, a very nice group of teachers over there. So if you are looking to transfer to Cal State Fullerton, look up geography there. It's really cool. Um, you'll actually have an extra credit opportunity later this semester that will involve going to that campus. And we'll talk about that later. Uh, right now, I also, uh, while I teach part time and I mostly teach online, that's because I also work as a GIS, Geographic Information System Analyst, for the city of Corona, which is where I live. Um, I love living and working here. I work for the local government. I maintain the spatial data sets for the entire city. I map absolutely everything that I can in the city. And we're doing some really cool stuff that I'll show and share with you later this semester. So I'm very excited. A little bit about this class. It takes place pretty much entirely on Canvas. For this class, you need a computer that can run Google Earth and eventually ArcGIS Pro and access the internet. And you will also need this book right here, Introduction to Geospatial Technologies by Bradley A. Shalito. You need the fourth edition. You cannot do this class with an older edition. Technology has changed too much. This isn't like history class where, well, history is more or less the same unless we've discovered something new. What happened, happened. Technology is changing every day. So you need the most current edition. I'm sorry, you cannot get the older edition. I will link below this video in our class on where you can rent this book for a bit cheaper than buying it because buying it is, I know, stupidly expensive. I wish it was cheaper for you guys. I'm sorry, but this is the best book out there for this class. I looked a lot. And so I will link that. I recommend renting it. It can be low as like 40 bucks for, and I think it, it might even get cheaper for paperback or for an ebook rental. Uh, keep special, pay special attention in mind if an ebook is right for you or not. I would only recommend an ebook if you can have a second device or a monitor to view the ebook on while you are doing our labs for later this semester, because you will want one screen with instructions and another screen with the program you're doing them in. So like I said, like on my computer right now, I have two screens that I can look at and have instructions on one and my work on the other, or if you have a tablet, you could 
load the ebooks on the tablet or even your smartphone if you're comfortable with that if you have a big enough screen um you know you want kind of a bare screen to read a whole textbook on so you have options i'm not trying to make this stupidly expensive for you um make sure that you always pay attention to the front page of our canvas shell it will have all the links to our most current modules you can also just go to the modules page follow them all in order every week i will post a new module that will help contain everything that you need to do for the week um, generally most everything will be due on sundays there are some discussion posts you will need to do your initial posts on fridays and then respond to your classmates by sunday and don't wait until then to do your work do it as early as you can in the week please just you'll make your life a lot easier because sometimes these assignments are going to get pretty heavy you cannot wait until 11 p.m on sunday to do this work you can't i mean it, you can but if you do you'll be sorry and you probably won't finish it and then you won't get full credit and you will do badly um so that's pretty much it uh read the syllabus that i have linked below uh Keep an eye on the schedule on the front page. Also look at the, um, on the left side of the page, you'll see a little calendar icon. That can be really cool. Um, any of your classes that are on Canvas, if there's assignments due, it'll list it on the calendar when it's due, which is really cool. And then it'll like cross it out when you've submitted something for it. So it's kind of a good visual track of what do I have left to do this week. Um, I'm gonna stop rambling now. Uh, please get started reading chapter one. That's our only goal for the week. Read chapter one, do the hands-on applications that are in it, do your introductory post, and start on the study guide. And I look forward to working with you all. This is going to be fun.